Helldivers 2 is brutal. It is unforgiving and it is utterly punishing. But there are some ways that you can find success with this amazing third person cooperative shooter. Dr. Poop Love here and today I have 18 tips and secrets to help you survive Helldivers 2. And stick around until the end because I have some tips that will help you get more medals faster. Let's get right into it. My first tip is to drop your weapon stratagems at the beginning of every mission. This is so that you have it on hand as soon as you enter Enter your first situation of combat. Dropping this early also allows your cooldown timer to start earlier, which means if you ever need to drop it again, you're gonna be able to have it. My next tip is to run away when you are overwhelmed and surrounded. Rather than staying in one place and trying to fight, which in many cases will get you killed, remember that you always have the option to run away, and it can be a very effective strategy. Now the enemies will chase after you, but running away resets the enemy's position relative to you, and that can allow you to reposition so you can be more successful. One thing you can do is lead enemies into bottlenecks in order to help you out so that they're coming at you more one by one in a line. In general, running away when you are about to get surrounded allows for them to line up all on one side of you, so you're no longer surrounded and you can have a much easier time taking them out one by one. Now, while running away, I need you to make sure to pay attention to your stamina bar, which will deplete over time. It's this little bar at the bottom of your screen, and usually one thing I do in order to make the most out of it is before it fully depletes, I stop, turn around, and fight for a bit and allow it to recharge. Then I can keep running. Now, speaking of escaping combat, my next tip is great, and that is to throw any airstrike stratagems at your feet while running away from an enemy horde. As long as your explosive isn't too fast or too big, you can do this and just keep running. By the time that stratagem actually lands, you will be safely far enough away, but many of your enemies won't be. Another good thing to do while running away is throw yourself some resupplies or guns by chucking those stratagems way ahead of where you are going so that they end up landing around the time that you get there. This can end up saving you a lot of time. Now my next two tips are for dealing with smaller swarms of enemies that are closing in on you. When you are getting surrounded, especially by a lot of the smaller enemies, remember that you can hip fire your weapon instead of trying to aim. The enemies at this range will be very close, so you can't really miss your shots, and it's a good way that you don't really have to actually aim down sights and try to get on target. Another thing you can do is you can actually shoot while you're diving. One thing I like to do is dive away and while I'm diving, start firing. And this allows me to get some distance from the enemy, but also allows me to take out some that are closer to me and give me a little bit more breathing room against a horde to get back up and run again. Now, one thing you'll notice is that ammo management in this game is critical, and it's different in some ways to other games. It's something that can actually be kind of hard to get used to. For most third-person shooters, I would recommend reloading your guns as much as possible to keep your clip fully stocked up and ready to fight. But in Helldivers 2, if you reload before exhausting all your ammo, that magazine will end up getting dropped and you will lose all the ammo you didn't use. For this reason, try to exhaust all your ammo first before reloading. Of course though, if you are about to enter into a big encounter and you really need those bullets, you can also reload when you are very low on ammo because you will lose a couple bullets here, but it might be worth it if you have a lot of enemies at your door. Now, here's something I don't think a lot of people actually know about, and that is that you can actually modify your guns. If you hold the square button, it actually brings up a menu that allows you to modify your existing weapon. This can be things like turning your gun from semi-automatic to automatic, or changing your scope, or even this is how you can get your flashlight to work. Another good thing that you can do is if you anticipate you will need to restock during a big battle, you can actually drop your or resupply before entering into combat. This will give you an easy way to restock without needing to enter the button combos and wait for the drop to occur. Oftentimes I'm already pretty much out of ammo when this happens, so if I have already dropped one, I could just run to that, restock, and get back in the action. Doing this early will also start your resupply cooldown timer much earlier, so if you need an additional resupply, you'll be able to do that much quicker. Now something else that will help you out a lot 
is to actually practice the button combos, especially for reinforcements, resupplies, and other commonly used stratagems. The stratagem hero game is actually a good way to practice, but you can also just practice on your own, and it's worth it to put in this work because you will be able to get these stratagems much faster and easier. When you are in the heat of battle, it can be really hard to look at your screen and try to enter in that combo. So if you have any of these memorized, it makes it that much easier. One thing you should also know is you can use your weapon stratagems and resupply stratagems to take out enemies too. It's a little bit harder because you have to be much more precise, but it can be done because as these stratagems come to you, the impacts to the ground will take some of the enemies out for you. This can help you out, especially if you've already exhausted all of your attacking stratagems. Another thing is when you are being reinforced, you do have some control over your hell pod. So you can use that to your advantage to try to aim for the big enemies to take them out. Now, another good thing to take note of when you are about to enter a big encounter is look at how many lives you have. And notice, are your stratagems stocked up? Because it may be worth hiding out and chilling out for a bit before entering into combat to let your stratagems cool down, as well as let your reinforcement pool build up. Then when you have those things in a good spot is when you can enter into combat. Something else to note is that on each planet, what you should try to do is take advantage of your environment as best as you can and understand your environment. Each environment is pretty unique and there are actually things you should probably watch out for, things that could really slow you down often or damage you that you should avoid. But even when in combat, you should use anything you see like rocks as cover, especially against automatons who will fire at you. You can hide behind cover to protect yourself from their firepower and then pop out and shoot them. Also, climbing to higher elevations can help you, especially against bugs where only a few can really jump up and get to you. You can climb a little bit to get to higher spots, but you can also get there when you are being reinforced by aiming your hell pod for higher elevation spots. You can also get to these places with your jump pack, which you can buy at level eight. Now from these vantage points, you can see a lot more, be able to pick off a lot more enemies, but you can also do so knowing that many of them can't even get to you. And it can be great for providing some cover for your teammates. Now, speaking of the jump pack, I actually really like this stratagem because these are great for getting you out of a hairy situation when you are surrounded. When there are a ton of enemies, I just use my jump whenever they have me pegged and this allows me to jump into safety or to higher ground so that I can survive longer. Now, when you actually are fighting the enemies, what you need to do is you need to try to take them out by firing at their weak spots. Generally, the red spots are the weakest spots for the automatons, so aim for that. And the orange-red bulging sacks are the weak spots for the terminates. Aim for those as much as you can. Many enemies in this game, however, they have their weak spots from behind, which can make things pretty tough. If you are with teammates, a good thing you can do is have one of you act as a distraction while the other other fires at these enemies from behind. Additionally, and especially if you're solo, grenades are good for getting damage from underneath and behind for these types of enemies. The grenade launcher is also especially helpful here. And also throwing a sentry behind these types of enemies can be a great way to have the sentry hitting them from behind while you distract. Okay, so next I want to talk about all the ways that you can get more medals faster. Firstly, one thing you should try to do is complete all the missions in a given area. If you are in a mission area, the reward for completing the first mission in that area is good, but it's lower. Whereas if you complete subsequent missions in that same area, these missions will give you much more medals. For this reason, try to stick to a given area until you've completed all the missions if you want to get the most medals. Another thing you can do is realize that there are medals out and about around these maps. Search for these fallen spacecrafts. In some of these minor locations on the maps, oftentimes these will drop medals for you. Another good thing is look for missions that are quick, easy, and repeatable because this can be a great way to farm for medals. Like I had this solid team that I was playing with and we just kept playing these defense missions over and over, which requires you to take out a number of enemies in 10 minutes. We ended up getting a very good rhythm going where we were taking them out super fast and just replaying that mission over and over again, granting us four medals each time. This was a great way to just stack up on medals. Now, another thing to note is that the harder the mission difficulty is, the more medals you'll be able to unlock for mission completion. 
execution. And so one of my best recommendations is trying to match make with a team on the hardest possible difficulty. Even if you aren't the greatest, you can often find a good squad and you can kind of ride their coattails a bit while you yourself are getting better. I was trying to level up initially mostly solo for a while, but I can only really handle solo missions on easier difficulties, which don't grant you as much medals. Not only are the harder missions much easier when you have more players on your team, but they also give you so many more rewards. Definitely, even if you prefer playing solo, you should try to matchmake, at least when you're trying to level up, to do this much faster and get better gear. But there you have it, 18 tips and secrets to help you get good at Helldivers 2. Let me know if these help you and let me know what your tips are. And I wanna say a special thank you to my YouTube members for joining the bowel movement. Thank you. But otherwise, so long, pooper troopers.